So good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity to talk. So just a brief outline to start off with of my talk today. Firstly, I'm going to have a quick talk about how an uh, image is produced on, in CMR, its safety, and finally, its utilization um, in adult congenital heart disease. So firstly, in a nutshell, how do we make images on CMR? Essentially, CMR uses a magnet and hydrogen atoms in the body. Um, when the body is put into a magne magnetic field, the hydrogen atoms initially align themselves in the direction of the magnet. When a radio frequency pulse is applied, um, the atoms then reorientate to a different direction. And when the radio frequency pulse is removed, the atoms then recover and realign themselves back to the initial direction. And in doing so, they emit, an they emit a signal that is collected by the machine and converted into an image. So that's essentially how we make our pictures. So with regard to its safety, MRI is fabulous because it has no radiation. So this makes it perfect for children, but also for our adult population, because this group of patients or have already have multiple exposures to radiation from cardiac catheterization, sometimes multiple cardiac casts, from x-rays, and sometimes also from CT for assessment of other body parts. Don't forget also with our population of patients, frequently they need serial imaging, depending on their morphology, for those with um, coaptation of aorta, for example, or for aortopathies, but also for the group of tetralogy or fellow for pulmonary regurgitation and RV dilatation follow-up. It is absolutely safe in pregnancy. And more recently, we have had um, the MMR compatible devices that have been available and is now currently being scanned on 1.5T, but also on 3T. So this is fabulous for our patients, but, um, but the devices, however, do cause metallic artifact seen here across the anterior wall of the LV. And it is possible to use different techniques to clean up the pictures such that we do get a nice picture like that. But occasionally, uh, no matter what we do, we cannot get rid of the metallic artifact and we end up with a picture like this. And this is when it might be um, important because the question that the patient was sent for may not be answered adequately. So in this particular case, this is a patient who had VT and subsequently had an ICD put in. So the reason for um, MRI at this stage is to try to uh, work out why this patient may have VT, and in particular to look for myocardial fibrosis. Myocardial fibrosis, as we all know, is a risk factor for arrhythmia and in particular ventricular tachycardia. But you might appreciate, if you do get a picture like this, where the anterior wall of the left ventricle is you know, pretty much blacked out, we're not going to get the answer necessarily that we were trying to strive for. So for the EP doctors out there, um, if I could ask that uh, just to bear this in mind, and if you could send the patient for CMR prior to the implantation of the devices. Now, turning to the applications of CMR in the assessment of adult congenital heart disease, it is very useful to look at the anatomical structures, to look at function, blood flow, tissue characterization, coronaries, and finally, stress perfusion. So with anatomy, um, MR is very good because it produces very high quality images. Um, it has a wide field of view so we can see basically anything that we want. Uh, we are not limited by body habitus and the pictures can be taken in any plane. So this is very good for definition of anatomy and in particular complex anatomy and to assess for defects. It is also uh, useful for pre-interventional or surgical assessment. So turning to function, you know, obviously function is made up of quite a few parameters, including anatomy, the abnormalities and what that physiological impact is on the heart, tissue characterization. Um, but CMR, one of its good uh, users is for volumetric assessment, that is for ventricular volumes and ejection fraction. So it does it very well, and it, is me and it measures the volumes and ejection fraction by a 3D fashion. And this is done by taking a stack or a series of contiguous slices in the 
short axis orientation from the base of the LV to the apex. It is very reproducible, especially for the LV, and in fact, at this current time, is the gold standard for left ventricular assessment. For the LV, now the LV is a little bit trickier because of its complex geometry. Um, unlike the LV, which is quite conical and symmetrical and easier to measure, um, the LV is quite, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not quite th that shape and it's quite, and it wraps right around the LV as well, making it more difficult. But at this time, CMI does offer the best method for volumetric assessment um, and is fairly reprodu reproducible. So with blood flow, blood flow is important because um, we need to be able to measure um, shunts um, to assess the valves for the degree of stenosis and regurgitation. Um, and we can do this on CMR by using a technique called phase contrast imaging. Um, it is also, so for example, in these pictures that we see here, um, this is a cine uh, picture and this is its corresponding phase contrast imaging. Um, what we see here is a TGA patient who has had a mustard operation and just to orientate, this is the SVC and this is the SVC pathway into the baffle and into the systemic venous atrium. Around it, we see the palmy venous drainage. I think you might be able to appreciate um, on the pictures that um, there's a little bit of what looks like a jet going through here and then see much better on the uh, phase contrast image seen as this black line or black flow through from the palmy venous, drain, uh, palmy venous atrium to the systemic venous atrium, this is a baffle leak, which can sometimes be quite hard to see. Um, other blood flow measurements that can be done are the amount of blood going through the um, palmy artery and through other stenotic lesions. So in short, um, using um, being able to measure blood flow um, by CMR, we are able to measure not only, just the, not only the amount of blood going through the region of interest, but also the severity of the lesion. So tissue characterization, so what is this? This is essentially a technique by which we can assess the composition of tissue. Um, the most common in the heart to be assessed is the myocardium. And um, what we look for are for um, evidence of fibrosis and edema or inflammation. Thrombus can also be assessed via CMR using this technique. Um, microvascular obstruction is a phenomenon that is seen after myocardial infarction. So this is useful um, in our patients for those who have the L-kappa syndrome. Um, and this is an example of an AMI in an L-kappa patient. Um, also for anomalous origins of the coronary arteries. And don't forget, with our adult population, as they get older, they will also uh, be at risk of ischemic heart disease. So this is another way of looking for it. Um, iron deposition is also another way of tissue characterizing um, the patient. This is not so much part of structural congenital heart disease, but for those of us who do pediatrics, and you may see the thalassemic patients or the, those with hemochromatosis, this is a useful technique to assess the heart for iron loading, which is a portender for heart failure and cardiac mortality. So tissue characterization is useful because it does enable us to understand the pathophysiology of the patient in more detail. It is also a marker of adverse outcome. We know that in Tetralogy of Fellow, for example, um, scarring does put the patient at risk for VT. Um, it is also, it, more recent uh, data has also shown that in the univentricular hearts and the systemic RVs, that fibrosis is an indicator of um, a stiff heart, so diastolic dysfunction, and also a pretender for heart failure. So Conrays. At this time, MR's main use for coronary assessment is really for anomalous origins of the coronaries and the proximal causes. You can also see um, proximal aneurysms, but it's not so good at this stage for coronary obstructive disease. Um, so mainly used for uh, looking for anomalous coronary arteries uh, here, and in this case, it's a Kawasaki with aneurysm. Now, stress perfusion. So, stress perfusion by CMR can be done uh, by using adenosine as the stressor or dobutamine. Adenosine is the most commonly used worldwide, mainly because it's thought to be safer 
the bitumen can be used, um, and the only issue is the environment. It's just the environment in the magnet that maybe makes it a little bit riskier. Um, I, I use adenosine, and it, I think it works very well. So in this particular patient, and I, can, I have to say this is a seven-year-old, so it, it is possible to do this in the pediatric population. This is a patient who has had an arterial switch for transposition of the great arteries. And in this patient, sometimes the, um, you can get stenosis at the reimplantation sites of the coronaries. So what we see here is at the top are the stress images and at the bottom are the rest images. So at the top, we have the um, LV at the base, mid and apex. Um, and what we're seeing here is, uh, firstly, the contrast flow going into the right ventricle, quite bright, and then into the left ventricle, and then finally into the myocardium. So in normal perfusion, the myocardium should light up, and any black areas are areas of deficit. So in this particular patient, we do have a ring of um, perfusion deficits around the septum, anterior wall and anterolateral wall extending almost down to the apex. So to conclude, CMR is a very good way to assess our adult congenital patients. It is very safe. We can get, derive a lot of information from it. Um, I, I do suggest that um, you do check that um, your CMR person does do this because it, in order to do congenital CMR, we, we do need extra training. Um, so to get the most information for your CMR, maybe just check that out. But in short, it is very useful and easily done. <laughs>